Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book haul. Uh, the books that I'm going to be talking about are those that I acquired from Second Time Books in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I went back in May uh, with a friend of mine. Uh, she had wanted to pay them a visit, and we had, had, we had arranged so that we can go at some point and visit them. I managed to get 12 books total. And I'm going to go through them and talk about what inspired me to add them to my collection. Uh, the first book that I want to talk about is uh, Magic Terror, uh, Seven Tales by Peter Straub. Uh, Peter Straub is somebody that I am looking to get into. Uh, the next book that I'm going to be reading, or by the time that this comes out, I will be currently reading, uh, maybe even finished reading, is Ghost Story. But the, uh, the short stories that are in this piece include uh, Ash Puddle, Isn't It Romantic, The Ghost Village, Bunny is Good Bread, Pork Pie Hat, Hunger and Introduction, and Mr. Club and Mr. Cuff. Readers of today probably recognize Peter Straub the most with, uh, from the fact that he collaborated with Stephen King. Uh, they wrote The Talisman together and Black House. Uh, Peter Straub recently passed away, which was very saddening, uh, but he was very active on his own right and is very often uh, acclaimed and revered by even those that aren't traditional uh, horror readers. Next, I got Haze of the 23rd uh, by T. Harry Williams. Uh, this has to do with uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, who is known most as being the 19th president of the United States. But to him, uh, his golden years were not the four years that he was president, which was 1877 to 1881, but the uh, years that he spent as the... Uh, unit commander for the 23rd Regiment uh, from 1861 to 1865 uh, during the Civil War. Uh, but this is actually the first uh, individual biography I have of Hayes. I know that he, there are some of them that are out, but I think this is going to be an interesting view, uh, and I'll be curious to learn about uh, his uh, life during the uh, Civil War years. Next, I got the, uh, this is a biography of Egon Schill. Uh, this was uh, written by Reinhard Steiner, and this is part of the uh, Tazchen collection of uh, artistic biographies. I started my major collection when I found several of them at Return the Page in Williamstown, but... This one was not part of it, and I'm glad that I was able to add this. I need to make a list of what I have yet to acquire, uh, because I want to keep an eye out for them. I was thinking of my dad when I was uh, when I uh, acquired when I purchased this book, uh, and this is Paul Revere's Ride, which has to do with uh, a more biographical account of the uh, Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Uh, because it, there is this myth uh, as to how it happened where he was screaming the British are coming, when in actuality it didn't go like that. Uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow uh, made, it more uh, made it more mythical so that uh, they would rally up more support for the Civil War and create a more glorified reflection of the American Revolution. Next, I got a novel of historical fiction called The Sorrow of Belgium uh, by Hugo Claus. And I'm inclined to... This is... This is quite interesting on the basis that uh, I'm I, I would 
I'd like to examine historical fiction from the uh, perspective of Belgium uh, and its uh, place in the world, uh, primarily during the uh, World War II era and the uh, eventual uh, the Nazi invasion that took place. Next I got Insatiable. Tales from a Life of Delicious Excess uh, by Gail Green. Uh, I, fond I recognize Gail Green uh, because she was on a few uh, uh, cooking shows as a judge. Uh, she was a judge on Iron Chef America, and in particular, it was Battle of Barramundi between Bobby Flay and... Ralph Pagano, who was runner-up of the first season of Hell's Kitchen. Uh, and then she was also a judge uh, more frequently on the first season of Top Chef Masters. I only watched the first season, so I'd have to do more research as to whether or not she went beyond that point. I don't think she did, but uh, that's where I recognize her. Uh, and I'll be very... And this is a legend... This is a collection of various essays, uh, just random essays all pertaining to food, and to me I can eat something like this with a spoon, uh, with the metaphor intended. Next I got Provencal Cuisine. This is Innovative Recipes from the South of France by Louisa Jones with photography by Allison Harris. I had my eye on visiting Provence uh, in Cape May Courthouse uh, in New Jersey, and I finally had the opportunity to do so, and it was really good. And I want to learn much more about uh, French cuisine from this region, and uh get a greater sense of uh, what it is that they uh, put together and maybe even cook something from here. Next I got Across Five Aprils by Irene Hunt. And what drove me to this is that it was a uh, Newbery Honor. Uh, and it, it says as per the back, uh, it, prevents, it, it presents the unforgettable story of Jethro Creighton, a brave boy who comes of age during the turbulent years of the Civil War. And I thought that was enough of a hook to uh, encourage me to buy this book. Then there's The Indian in the Cupboard by Lynn Reed Banks. I don't think this is a uh, Newbery uh, medalist or honor, uh, but I'm inclined to check this out. Uh, it seems like a pretty fascinating story. Next, I got The Sunset Limited by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, this is written in the play format, uh, and I think I've developed enough promise to want to uh, incorporate any Cormac McCarthy book I come across into my collection. Uh, I thought that The Road and No Country for Old Men were pretty good, uh, but I like his writing style and I like his approach. I think it's very respectable, uh, the way that he does his best to approach things objectively. Next, I got A Passage to India by E.M. Forster, and... For this, I incorporated in. I, I added this to my collection because uh, I'm getting ready to uh, read it for something that's connected with literary gladiators. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, but I, after looking it over, I do want to read more by Ian Forster. I do own Maurice, and uh, I'll be getting to this first though. And finally, I finally added the complete novels of James Joyce to my collection. I owned Ulysses for a period of time, but I didn't think I'd ever get to it, so I donated it. Uh, but 
The one that I'm planning to be reading soon is Finnegan's Wake. And I've heard very mixed things about that. Uh, there's some people that love it, and then others that tell me to avoid it like the plague. But we'll see what we'll see how everything goes because I know that uh, James Joyce intentionally writes his pieces to challenge you as a reader. Those are all of the books that I acquired on my most recent visit to Second Time Books. Uh, it is an extraordinary bookstore that I highly encourage you to check out if you are ever in the uh, Rancocas Woods area of Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Uh, and I highly encourage you to check out some more videos from our channel. Uh, for now and as always, I encourage you to keep reading.